Hey everybody, welcome back to the ECG channel. My name is Reed. Don't forget to download this week's PDF down from the description and like and subscribe if you enjoy these videos. So let's jump into this EKG. So the first thing I like to do is look at the forest and the trees of the forest are my QRSs. And so I like to tick away at my QRSs here at the bottom and see I've got somewhat, uh, I don't know if I would call this regular, right? If you look at some of these R to R intervals, compare that to the previous, I would say some of these are longer than the others. My QRS, if I look through some of my leads, it seems to be a bit wide. We'll measure that here in a little bit. So I would say I've got an irregular rhythm, and it seems wide QRS. But let's see what, we'll see what we can discern from this ourselves going through our complete approach. And so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to evaluate the atrial activity. And so let's look at what my P waves are doing. I don't necessarily see any P waves as I start in the rhythm strips here. And when I look here, I don't see any discernible atrial P's. And same thing up here in lead one. And my, I don't see any P waves that are driving my QRSs. And so when I look through, I don't see any P waves. I see this fibrillatory baseline. And so that makes me think that this is atrial fibrillation, which we would really see the atrial fibrillation as there is no organized atrial activity, but there is a baseline fibrillatory, right? Because you could see no P waves in something that's like a sinus arrest, and that would be a flat baseline, but atrial fibrillation, you would see a little bit of a fibrillatory baseline, and you can see that really well in, in V1. And that would explain the irregular QRS uh, durations there, not the durations, but the intervals that we noted earlier. And so we got an atrial fibrillation here, and so obviously we cannot measure our PR interval in AFib because we need a P wave to measure the PR. But what we can do is we can now look at uh, the rate here and see what is our the fibrillatory rate. And we can look and we can find the widest QRS duration, which would be, I would say, right here. So that would be 300, 150, 100, 75, 60, maybe... 55 beats per minute there compared to this one, which would be 300, 150, 100, 75, maybe 65. So this is 55 to 65 beats per minute. So that's a regular response. On a little bit on the slower side, we can call that a regular uh, response. And so let's look at our QRSs here. Our QRSs, we said are wide. If I look at the interval of my QRS here in V1, my QRS is wide. It's greater than 120 milliseconds in duration. And my QRS, it, my axis is normal. My QRS is upright in lead one. It's upright in AVF, so it's got a normal QRS axis. But we said it's a wide complex, and so I need to form a differential for what is a wide complex QRS. Well, it could be coming from a ventricular ectopic beat, it could be a bundle branch block. I would say more likely in the setting of atrial fibrillation where we know that in AFib, our atria are fibrillating all over the place, but the AV node is letting signal down from the AV node down into the ventricles. And so if conduction is delayed through the ventricles in the form of our QRS being wide, then maybe that could be a bundle branch block. And so I looked up at V1, and I looked for right bundle branch block, and what do I see? I see an RSR prime, RSR prime in V1. So that's an RSR prime pattern, R being this, S being our second, and the R prime being our last positive deflection. And that RSR prime tells me that we have late forces going towards my anterior chest leads or the right side of the heart, my right ventricle. And then similarly, if I look at my lateral leads, V5, V6, I've got this slurred S wave. I've got this slurred S wave, which tells me that there are late forces that are going slowly away from the lateral leads towards my right-sided chest leads. And so you can also see that here in lead one in lead AVL those slurred S waves, right? These are also our lateral leads. And so it, when we have late forces going towards the right ventricle, that is usually because our right bundle branch is blocked. So this is a right bundle 
branch block, which would explain our wide complex QRS. I'm still not done. I'm going to take a look at my ST and T waves, and I, and I see some strain patterns that are typical where you see some T wave inversions um, with our um, on our right sided chest leads, especially the ones that are kind of capturing that right bone branch block, but that's normal. My STs are still normal. And so when I put this all together, what is going to be the diagnosis for this individual? We've got atrial fibrillation with a normal ventricular response and a right bundle branch block. So important takeaways here, when you have somebody that has AFib, remember this is purely this is purely an arrhythmia of the atria. So atrial fibrillation has, you know, is all about what's going on in the atria. And remember that the AV node in AFib is a bystander. What does that mean? That means that the AV node is sitting here, it's receiving that signal, and it's going to send it down at a certain rate. And so we need to determine what that rate is, and here we said it was a normal or moderate ventricular response. So our AV node, the conduction, you know, how fast the AV node is conducting its signals down to the to the ventricles, is going to be up to the health of the AV node. So the AV node is going to be a bystander, and we can still evaluate. We can still evaluate the QRS morphology like we normally would. And so, and that's because our AV node is sending that signal down. So we always think of AFib as, you know, the QRS in AFib should be the same QRS morphology that is in our baseline EKG for this individual if they were in a sinus rhythm because it's still being driven by the AV node depolarizing the ventricles. So I hope this helps. Um, and if you have any questions, throw them in the comments below. And not have a great day.